Discover the unbelievable story of Vladimir Putin surviving a staggering 43 assassination attempts in this gripping video. From daring escapes to mysterious plots, learn how the Russian president has cheated death time and time again. Join us as we delve into the intense world of political intrigue and danger surrounding one of the most powerful leaders in the world. Don't miss out on this incredible tale of survival. Vladimir Putin is one of the most powerful, recognized, and controversial figures in the world. Naturally, it's logical that someone who has led Russia, one of the world's largest military powers, for over 20 years, has made more than a few enemies over time. While the Russian government usually provides little information or outright denies such incidents, the fact remains that Vladimir Putin's life has been threatened by enemy attacks on more than one occasion. Actually, in more than 40 occasions. And now, with the war in Ukraine, that number is likely to increase. These assassination attempts against the Russian leader have failed, but what is most interesting is how these attacks were carried out, who is behind them, how Putin managed to survive each one unscathed, and what advice from Fidel Castro the Russian president followed to the letter. Get ready to learn how Vladimir Putin survived 43 assassination attempts. In 1999, after holding several important political positions and even working as a street spy, Putin was appointed Prime Minister of Russia by then-President Boris Yeltsin. Less than a year later, following Yeltsin's resignation, Vladimir Putin assumed the presidency of Russia. Although many citizens supported the new head of state at the time, this generated strong opposition from others, both inside and outside of Russia. Over the years, Putin's strong and resolute image has sparked national and international controversy, to the point where numerous assassination attempts have been made on his life. While the Russian government and intelligence generally conceal this information to avoid showing the discontent that some groups or citizens might have against the president, these attempts were confirmed by Putin himself during an interview with renowned American filmmaker Oliver Stone. Here's what he said. Fire, fire, we tied our animals. This directly refers to these assassination attempts, and Putin listens without denying anything, which confirms the fact. However, it wouldn't just be five assassination attempts against the Russian president. Some sources indicate there have been over 40. While the Russian government's decision to keep everything secret has left many of these attempts in the dark, several are known, and that's what I want to tell you about. The first attempt occurred in February 2000, less than two months after Putin took office. This attempt took place in St. Petersburg during the funeral of the city's former mayor, Anatoly Sobchik. The little that is known is that the Federal Guard Service managed to prevent the attack and protect Putin. Later, the press secretary of this organization, Sergei Devisto, admitted the incident and, while he did not provide information about the whereabouts or fate of the perpetrator, he confirmed that the attacker was part of an organization and not just a lone civilian acting alone. Incredibly, this was not the only attempt on the Russian president's life during his first year in office. Later, in August 2000, during a meeting of presidents from the various independent states that had belonged to the Soviet Union, held in Yalta, there was another attempt that was again thwarted by Putin's security forces. While the documents about this incident remain classified, it has been confirmed that it was carried out by four Chechen men working in conjunction with an undetermined number of Middle Eastern countries. Similarly, a few months before Putin was scheduled to visit Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan, his security forces received information about an assassination attempt planned for that visit in January 2002. The plot was organized by an Iraqi citizen with ties to Afghanistan and Chechen rebels. They were preparing to deliver a significant amount of explosives when they were caught. The Iraqi man and the person who supplied the explosives were each sentenced to 10 years in prison. At this point, you'll notice a trend. The importance of Putin's security services in thwarting all these assassination attempts is truly invaluable. Undoubtedly, one of the most bizarre assassination attempts occurred just a month later when a man drove to the Kremlin complex. He presented himself to the security members and informed them that his name was Ivan Zaitsev and that he was the true president of Russia. To the office's bewildered looks, Zaitsev ordered them to take him to see Vladimir Putin as soon as possible. Of course, security sent him to a nearby hospital for examination. There, the man confessed that this was not his first attempt on Putin's life, whom he wanted to eliminate for allegedly being a German undercover agent intent on leading Russia to fanaticism. At the same time, he said he would behead him as revenge for having beheaded his brother. 
The most competent assassination attempt took place that same year, in November 2002. It was thwarted by an intelligence tip about a group of people allegedly placing posters on a road near the Kremlin, where Putin's car would pass. They were found with 40 kilograms of explosives ready to detonate. The street and Putin's car were redirected, and subsequently, government officials denied the incident, despite it being the most serious and well-planned attempt of all. So much so that the following year, a similar, though much less competent, attempt was made on a highway between St. Petersburg and Moscow, along which Putin's car would travel. Police found a poorly made homemade bomb hidden in a bag by the roadside. It was quickly and easily deactivated. In 2008, Putin won the presidential election, in part to silence those who claimed that Russia was not truly a democracy. He became prime minister under the new president Dmitry Medvedev, although many believe he was still making the decisions during that period, which lasted until 2012. It was always the same Putin. Nonetheless, according to reports, while Putin and Medvedev were walking near the Kremlin after the election victory, a sniper aimed at the then former president. While it's unclear whether the shooter managed to fire before being apprehended, the fact is that Putin again survived completely unscathed thanks to his security team's efforts. One of the assassination attempts we know about occurred in 2012, once Putin returned to the presidency. A group of Chechens planned to kill him by remotely detonating a bomb by the roadside, but again, their plan was foiled by the Russian government's security forces. With everything told so far, it's clear that Putin's security service has done an outstanding job. They have thwarted assassination attempts repeatedly, ensuring not only that the Russian leader remains alive but that he hasn't even been injured. The functioning of the Federal Guard Service of the Russian Federation, also known as Rogbardia, is more than interesting. This organization primarily handles safeguarding the lives of the country's top political figures, obviously prioritizing above all others Vladimir Putin. This is a security force but at the same time, it functions as an intelligence agency and special forces unit with a budget that, as one might expect, is very high. Officers are generally under 35 years old and must pass various tests and training in physical and intelligence skills to enter the agency. They also study numerous languages to perform their duties effectively during the president's foreign visits. When an event approaches in the president's calendar, his security team investigates and visits each location well in advance and under tight security, identifying potential danger spots and expanding the security operation even preparing for the possibility of a natural disaster. Similarly, they conduct extensive intelligence work to identify dangerous civilians and anticipate any form of attack. During the event, operatives are distributed in four security circles. The primary bodyguards, usually dressed in suits, surround Putin and represent the first circle. We can assume they are former members of the best special units. The second circle mingles with the crowd, dressed as civilians to detect any unusual movement or behavior. The third circle is positioned outside the crowd, also dressed as civilians, performing a similar role but from a certain distance. Finally, the fourth circle consists of snipers guarding Putin from various strategic high points. All these men are armed with different weapons, bulletproof vests, signal jammers, explosive detection technology, anti-drone weapons, and it is even said that their briefcases and umbrellas can be used as shields. Additionally, they are all well communicated. The goal of this security service is to anticipate attacks, act in advance, and avoid crisis moments. If one of these attempts becomes unavoidable and endangers the president's life, they have a protocol in place, including transporting him to a safe location with the assistance of various special vehicles, including a large number of cars and even two planes to avoid making it obvious which transport Putin is using. Undoubtedly, Robbardia has been crucial in keeping Putin alive, but there is one piece of advice given to Putin by a historical figure. Fidel Castro, like Putin, was a character with many enemies, and it is said he survived more than 600 assassination attempts. His security organization was so good that Putin contacted him for advice. Fidel Castro replied, The real traitors are always closer than you think. One must not trust anyone. People are not as they seem in politics, the true enemies of a president are not found in politics, but just around the corner. It is believed that Putin always keeps this advice in mind and carefully selects his inner circle, distrusting anyone who approaches him. In short, while much of Vladimir Putin's success in staying alive is due to the excellent work of his security team, 
His own caution may also be a crucial factor. The risk of the Russian president facing further assassination attempts in the near future seems quite high, especially due to the significant impact of the invasion of Ukraine. Since this war began, there have been published threats against Putin's life from both Ukrainian and Russian citizens. Security forces have intensified their efforts, but once again, only time will tell if Putin's life can be sustained beyond this situation. With a clear and concise conviction that no one could escape unscathed from so many assassination attempts except for the incredible security and also the personal caution of Vladimir Putin. We invite you to share your opinion. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description.